Um, I'm Reverend Justin Ledbetter. It's my uh, honor to welcome you uh, to worship this morning, uh, to welcome friends and neighbors um, uh, in person as well as those that are worshiping with us uh, in, the, in the web stream. Uh, today is Scout Sunday. Uh, it's one of the most super Sundays of the year um, in the life of our church and in churches across America uh, as we celebrate scouting uh, with our boys and, and their families. Uh, and so it is my privilege uh, to, to welcome you and to gather us uh, together. We want to make a few um, introductions this morning uh, as we begin uh, our time of celebration and, and worship with our scouts. And so the first of those is simply for me uh, to introduce to you our chaplain. Um, our, our Troop 99 um, is privileged uh, to, to have the leadership of Mr. Dan Carp. And so I want to welcome Dan uh, this morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Our scouts are, are very appreciative about uh, having you guys um, let us meet here once a week. Um, and it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity we have here. Um, but I've also, um, uh, during the welcoming, I think I had uh, 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 Barbara Kane. She mentioned that she'd like to, to throw something out there. I think I forgot about you, didn't you? <laughs> good morning, everybody. Fifty years ago, SUMC saw the need for a new Sunday school class for young adults. So Crusaders for Christ was created. Our first teachers were Myron Garbett and Valerie Clonch. And Myron is the one who designed and made this banner that you see on the wall over here that says Crusaders for Christ. And of course the symbolism there is the cross symbolizing Christ's sacrifice for us. And the flame to the side of it, it symbolizes Pentecost uh, when the disciples were filled with fire for the Lord. Um, I also want to note that in your insert today, there's a mistake. The flowers at the front of the sanctuary are provided by Lynn Robinson in memory of her husband, Glenn, who was also a crusader. And if you notice the banner at the front of the church, this one that says, the Lord is my shepherd, that one was donated from the Crusader Sunday School class in memory of Glenn and Donnie Walker, our past members. Uh, over the years, we have grown our families together, we've partied together, we've grieved together, we've learned together, and retired together. Sunday School has made us better together. So no matter what stage of life you are in, you are not too old or too young to be a part of our crusade. Welcome this morning. Thank you, Ms. Barb. Thank you to the Crusaders for being our hosts throughout the month of February. We'd also like to recognize uh, in, in the beginning here some of our, some of our leaders, our, our adult leaders, um, that, make this, uh, that make the program possible um, and we, we like to think of ourselves as uh, sitting in the back seat because we want to make sure the boys are out there running the, running the, running the, uh, the camp outs and making sure that everything is happening. They're the ones that uh, put on the devotions uh, during the camp out weekends. They're the ones that uh, they, they once a year, the, the, the patrol leaders council gets together and they decide where they're going camping. And we've got to rein them back once in a while and tell them we're not going to NASA, or we're not going to, you know, the Bahamas, or we're not going to Colorado every year to go hiking. So we keep it within Arkansas, but, but they pick out those dates, and then, not so much the dates, but they pick out the, uh, the events they want to go, if they want to go caving, you know, if they want to go backpacking or canoeing. So, but the, uh, the adults in the back uh, that, uh, that help uh, all the, that do the, the safety and administration and and, uh, and they're at these, you know, making it happen from that end, our, our scoutmaster, Mr. John Douglas, if you'll stand up, please. Come up here. Come on up. And then uh, Mr. Mark Thomas is one of them. And then uh, I want to uh, uh, reckon, Mark. reckon... Mark's also our cub master as well. Recognize, um, and we, we've got several more leaders back here. I guess we could have you guys, yeah, come on up. What the heck? Uh, we got uh, David, David Jackson, we got Nate Felton, um, my mind just left me. Matt? Last name? MacArthur. MacArthur. Matt MacArthur. Come on up. 
Come on, Jeff. And we need Mr. Yeah. McFarland. Richard. <laughs> so, come on up, guys. I want to toot Mr. McFarland's horn. Yep. He would say it's not a big deal, but I will. Uh, Mr. McFarland led our troop for more than, uh, more than a decade um, and was recognized uh, this past year for his leadership um, as the scoutmaster of the decade, in fact, uh, receiving the, the John Fordyce uh, Award from, um, from the Quapaw Council. And so uh, I want to honor Mr. McFarland and give God a little praise for the man he is, uh, for the husband he is, for the dad he is, uh, for the leader he is. Um, and I, I want to, um, this is 50 years uh, of, of 99. Um, we can't invite up every leader we've ever had, but I'm going to uh, hand this check that you can't take to the bank um, and this one that you can uh, to Mr. Douglas uh, for $500 um, to the troop and tell you how much we appreciate you, sir, and how grateful I am uh, for, for all of you guys. I just want to shake your hands um, and, and give thanks for all of you guys so much. If you will, just, uh, I'm telling you, look around at the brown shirts and blue shirts in this room. Um, they wouldn't say it, but we have the largest, most active, strongest troop um, in all of Arkansas. It's the truth. Um, and, and we should be proud of, of these boys and the things that they've accomplished in becoming men. Um, and, and to give God praise for these dads and leaders. You'll get to hear more, you guys take your seats, you'll get to hear more from um, Mr. Douglas uh, and Mr. Thomas uh, in our rep annual report in, in just a minute, but we certainly want to, uh, to recognize all of them. Thank you again too, sir, I didn't get a chance to shake your hand. I, call him forward for the call. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Aubrey Adams to step forward. He is going to lead us um, in, uh, in, the, in, a, in the presentation of the colors, followed by the opening prayer. Please rise for the presentation of the colors. Scouts, attention. <clears throat> Color guard, advance. Salute by the numbers one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Republic of States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard, post the colors. Scout sign. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, and to live away and morally straight. As a is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. Color guard dismissed. Please remain standing for the opening prayer delivered by Eli McQueenie. May you all may you all bow your heads as we pray. The scouting in this place and around the world that through its efforts, scouts increase in wisdom and in stature. And in favor with you and all people, please help us to use scouting to bless others and make the world a better place. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Help us to carry these wonderful gifts in our own hearts and lives. May we, may we share these to all. Amen. Amen. Would you please remain standing and join us in song and our 
Her song will be, His Name is Wonderful. <laughs>
Hey, at this time, uh, we'd like to have, uh, I guess Mark Thomas is going to come forward and, uh, and kind of give a, give a quick report on the, uh, on the, on the troop, uh, on the, on the scouts, on the Cub Scouts. After that, I believe Mr. John Douglas, am I correct, is going to come forward and talk about the Boy Scouts. Um, I want to make a quick comment about what you all saw up here earlier, which is, <coughs> which is something that, uh, made a large impression on me when I first uh, got involved with the Scouts. Uh, I don't know, it seemed like a couple of decades ago now. I had four, but my, my fourth son is going through now, so my, my oldest son just had their first son, so we'll be back in Cub Scouts again in seven years. Oh, my gosh. <coughs> hard, to, hard to think about that. Some of you understand that, the grandkids and how it all, you know, you, you have kids and they just bring more home. But... Uh, uh, but what I, what I thought was um, really impressive was the number of adult leaders um, that step up and, and do this um, either as the, uh, at the council level, I mean, not the council level, but the, uh, at the troop committee level, which is all the, behind, the truly behind the scenes program. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the people that show up for the meetings and help run that. And then we've got a lot of adults that go on the campouts. Uh, and there's, a, there's just a, all these guys up here you saw, uh, they are they are instrumental in running the program. So that was a that's huge when you see that much parental involvement in a program. So at uh, Mark. Good morning, church family. Uh, my name is Mark Thomas. And I have the honor of being the Cub Master for our Cub Scout program. Uh, Pack 82 was founded here at Salem United Methodist Church 30 years ago. This is our 30th year. So like the Boy Scouts are celebrating 50, we're, we're celebrating 30. So big accomplishment. So thank you guys for, for hosting us for all these many years. Cub Scouts is a program for grades kindergarten through fifth grade. We have a wonderful group of boys and families. And we have a lot of fun together. Our program follows the school year, so we start, we get started up in September, we wrap up in, at the end of May at, once school stops. We have a few summer activities, but mostly we take the summers off. Um, we currently have 25 scouts re registered with our pack. Last night we had four of those scouts that crossed over to our Boy Scouts this year. So, so uh, and we actually, of those four, we had two scouts that completed the entire program. They had been there through, through uh, when, when they joined, uh, first grade was the earliest you could start. So, so they completed the whole program and they're on their way to becoming Eagles. So we're looking forward to see what those guys are going to do. Um, one of the main things that we really like to foster in our program is friendships. Uh, we think that, we feel that scouting provides the character building to, to help these boys form lasting friendships. So one of the things we really enjoy doing is giving these kids time to have fun just together. And one of their favorite things to do is just play out there in that big field around the, the well. They like to jump on top of the well and, and just have a lot of fun together every week. And that's one thing we really enjoy seeing is these boys form these lasting friendships. Another thing we like to really focus on is giving our parents a chance to spend time with their children. This is one hour a week that parents can spend with their child doing something fun. They get to go to Scouts together, they get to come and do a fun activity, the Scouts get to hang out with their friends. On the way home, they get to do some, spend some one-on-one -on -one time with their parents. And we really like to encourage that with our families. I know with, with my son, my youngest son, our big thing was we close up the church after scouts and we go to the Dollar General and we get a Dollar General snack and that was something we looked forward to every day. I know a lot of families do something similar. Some go to Freddy's, some go to Salem Dairy Barn. Just something, something that simple that families can do together, just, just the two of them and, and uh, form some lasting bonds there as well. Some of our highlights from, the year, from this year is uh, we, we had our first, this past year we did our first rain gutter sailing regatta. You probably saw a picture up there. Basically what we did was we took a rain gutter that you put on your house and we filled it with water and the uh, boys built these little sailboats and they used straws to blow the sailboat through the rain gutter and they raced each other. That was a pretty big success. I think we're going to continue to do that. So, uh, so that, that was a lot of fun. 
We had a, uh, a, a back to school party at the Vortex Retro Arcade. That's up in Sherwood. It's a pretty neat place if anybody's ever been there. We had a camp out at Lake DeGray. We had our Bobcat Award Ceremony. Bobcat is the very first badge Scouts earn in Cub Scouts. Uh, we did that just outside the Fireplace Pavilion here at the church, which is a wonderful facility that you guys offer for us to use. Uh, we had our ce uh, Christmas celebration over at Benton uh, in, at Tyndall Park. Uh, last weekend, we did our Pinewood Derby, which is where we build the little Pinewood little cars and race them. That's our, probably our biggest event of the year. That was just last weekend. And then yesterday, we had our blue and gold where we recognized all of our scouts for their rank advancements, and we had our four wee belows that crossed over into Boy Scouts. Uh, a couple of activities that we've got coming up. Uh, the, the Cubmobile race is one of our next biggest activities. This is one where the scouts will actually build a car and they'll put a helmet on and they'll, they'll get on that car and they'll race it. They'll put it on a ramp and they'll, they'll race each other. And we do that right out here in the church parking lot and uh, that's coming up here in April. Uh, anybody would like to come and check it out, we'd love to have you guys come check it out. That's a lot of fun for us. We've got a camp out coming up in, in, at Petty Jean State Park. And we wrap up the year with a rocket launching party uh, every year. So we, the, the boys have a chance to build rockets and shoot them off. Um, but it, I'd just like to, at this time, just really express my gratitude to the church for, for hosting us every week, uh, for allowing us to have this, imp to, allowing us to impact these families in this community. Uh, this is a wonderful program and a wonderful facility that, that you guys let us use every week. And uh, just thank you guys for letting us serve these families every, every week. And, and uh, we look forward to continuing to serving uh, together in for, for many years in the future. So, thank you. You know, as Mark was talking, I was just, just thinking, I wish we could track some of these boys that have come through uh, PAC 82 into Troop 99. And some of them we do track and we know who they are and where they're at, but to kind of see where they're at and, uh, and what leadership roles they've taken on um, in the community um, and in their, in, their, in their jobs and hopefully within the families. So, but uh, I know that the troop has a definite impact. Uh, I've, I've seen it. Uh, Mr. Douglas, if you'll come forward, tell us about uh, the state of the uh, union for the, for the Boy Scout troop. <laughs> Well, the state of the troop is really good. But good morning. My name is John Douglas, and I have the privilege of being a scoutmaster for Troop 99. Um, I'm also a parent of a uh, Cub Scout in Pack 82. I've got three boys that are involved in the troop in the pack, so it's just a unique privilege to both be in leadership and be a parent from that perspective. Um, just a lot of growth takes place over these years. But this year marks the 50th year of scouting at Salem United Methodist Church. And I just, I just think that's incredible. Um, so many young guys have cycled through this program and um, they're, they have bound to have had a very positive impact on this community. Um, was anybody here in 1973 when this started? Just raise your hand. That's, that, <laughs> that's great. Well, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> But a half a century of scouting, that's a pretty big deal. Um, I don't have a whole lot of historical data about the troop, except that I do know that we have had 72 Eagle Scouts to date, um, which is a super awesome number, by the way. That's a, that's a very high percentage of success in Scouts. And there's a whole bunch lined up up here that are on their way, well on their way, right guys? Y'all are gonna do that this year? Yes, okay. <laughs> But we could not do what we do without the partnership here with this church. And I just want to express my gratitude to Salem United Methodist Church for all that you guys do for us and for your sponsorship and support uh, of both Cub Scout Pack 82 and Boy Scout Troop 99. Um, we would not be able to do these things for these boys without y'all's help. Um, I know that you get to see a lot of signs of activity uh, around here. Um, you may not ex know exactly what's going on, um, but um, a, a brief description. Boy Scouts are between the ages of 10 and 18 years old. We meet every Monday night 
Uh, we go camping one weekend a month. Uh, in addition to these regular activities, we go on uh, a lot of adventures throughout the year. We'll go uh, canoeing on the Buffalo River on spring break for five to eight days. Uh, we usually do a high adventure opportunity every other year. Um, this summer, we're actually gonna go um, to Sea Base in Florida. They'll spend a week on a sailboat in the Florida Keys, which, you know, they almost get to the Bahamas, right? So, um, <clears throat> they made it. <laughs> but um, they'll have the opportunity to canoe and hike about 100 miles this year. We try to, we try to do that every year. Um, but it's not all about, all about the camping and the hiking. Uh, our main goal is to build strong, confident leaders, good characters, and well-informed citizens. Uh, if a scout stays in our program for uh, the seven years that he's eligible to stay, uh, he'll experience one of the most well-rounded programs available to uh, youth currently. They'll put in hundreds of hours of service-related duties and hold leadership positions and learn to make hard decisions and deal with the consequences of those decisions. They earn merit badges that will introduce them to career opportunities, life skills, and better citizenship. They will learn to apply the scout oath and the scout law, y'all heard that this morning that we recited, they'll apply this in their everyday life uh, and in their dealings with other people. They'll use these points to guide their decisions in their walk through life. They will use the scout motto, be prepared, and the scout slogan, do a good turn daily. I just wish all of you could see the progress that these boys make throughout their scout career, from the tiny tiger cubs to the proud Eagle Scouts. Um, I've only got a few minutes here to paint you an adequate picture of what this organization does. Um, so I'll try to make the most of that here. Uh, I know I speak for the other leaders in this troop that work as a team to support the growth of these young men and that our labor is not in vain. We're so privileged to walk through this trail with these boys. Um, it takes years to see the growth though. It, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, but if you get to stick around long enough, you get a great reward of being able to see this uh, come to fruition. There are a lot of days that someone would look in from the outside and just see utter chaos. Um, we see that as a, a life lesson in the making, an opportunity to learn. Um, this troop is scout led like Mr. Carp mentioned. Um, meaning that they elect their leaders um, and the leaders call all the shots. They plan the meetings and the campouts and they have to execute their own plan. Um, the adults, yeah, we could, we could probably really organize this um, troop and lead a meeting really well, but um, to be honest with you, the only way that you're going to learn how to swim is to just jump in and start swimming and get to work and that's what we have them do. They, they just have to learn to swim the hard way and that is performing their own leadership duties. Um, we like to learn to have fun in the process though. Um, we, we learn and we have fun at the same time which is a great way to, to do, this, uh, do this journey. These young men, they're the leaders of our future. Um, you'll see them working in our community um, and beyond. I'm so proud of them for what they become and what they will become. And I hope that you understand that you play a very important role in this process and so you can take pride in their progress as well with them. So it's truly a pleasure, <coughs> excuse me, pleasure to speak to you today. Um, thank you, Pastor Ledbetter, for all of your support. We just really appreciate you and how that you speak to us and treat us and, and just, Anything we ask for, he's, he's just there for us. And just from me to you, I appreciate it, and from the troop as well. Um, and to Salem United Methodist Church, thank y'all so much for what you provide for us and, and for what you do for this troop. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Um, and uh, just, to, just to add something on to what you said, I've got a couple of personal experiences. Um, I've, uh, of my four boys, they've all four had the opportunity uh, to be senior patrol leader. And some of the comments that I've uh, gotten from them over the years were, um, were really uh, fun to hear as a parent and to see how they're going to handle it. Uh, my oldest son said, uh, he was at the summer camp and he said, Dad, he said, they're just not listening. So what are you going to do? 
and and I I just had to turn and walk away because that's 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 his lane. Uh, one of my other sons said, uh, he said, Daddy said, he said I can't tell you this was his first scout meeting as senior patrol leader, and he said I'm so glad that's over. <laughs> he said that was the longest meeting of my life, um, and so it gives them a and so uh, you know what Mr. Douglas is saying is. It is real. The, the boys are up there, and if they're not prepared, uh, then the meeting uh, kind of goes poorly. If they're prepared, it goes well. And so uh, they, they learn how to do that, and they learn how to handle those, uh, those, those issues when a young scout comes to them and says, I got a problem. Because on the back of our red shirts, you see all these guys who've got red shirts? A lot of them, I have a white one, but they got red shirts. The adults, on the back of their shirt, it says, ask your patrol leader. And so we want the we want that that chain of command command to work. Uh, Barbara, you ready? Our scripture reading today is from the New Living Translation, First Thessalonians. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing, dear brothers and sisters. Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. And live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are idle. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. It, it is uh, an honor and a privilege um, to be a part of the life of this church and the, and the ministry uh, of leadership and living uh, that, that scouting is um, in our community, um, in this country, and, and, in, and truly in the transformation uh, of the world. Um, it, it's a big job that, uh, to change the world. Um, and God uh, calls all of us uh, into that plan and that purpose, the, the salvation of the world uh, through Christ and, and by faith. In, in looking at this simple passage just for a few moments uh, uh, this Sunday morning, though, uh, I want to, to lift up uh, a couple of the things that were, that were said uh, from Thessalonians and to contribute to some of of what has been said, what's been prayed and spoken and sung uh, and shared among us uh, and before us uh, this morning. Uh, the first of those is, is simply to say how important it is uh, to be an example. The, the scripture begins there in the passage that, that was shared this morning, that it's important to be an example. You could nudge somebody next to you and tell them life is hard. Would you do that for me? Just nudge somebody next to you and and tell them. They, they may not know it. Um, you know, somebody here this morning, or if you're watching on the stream, somebody here this morning, the coffee pot didn't work, or the chi curling iron, uh, you know, had, had died its final death. So, somebody got in the car and, it, and, the, and the, the, you know, the engine light was on, or you were nearly out of gas. Uh, there was something that almost kept you from getting here or being here this morning. Maybe you're like one of the young men in our church. You've been working and on the road all over Arkansas and away from your family and putting food on the table. And you're tired and you're weary. But, but you have tried to, to put yourself somewhere and in a place where, where a part of God's Word may pass through your heart. You know, nudge somebody else and tell them in case they didn't hear from somebody else. Nudge another person and tell them life is hard. Right? And it is. Life is hard. Um, you know, life can be difficult. Uh, in fact, that's, that's why I believe in, in reading the book, um, because life can be hard. And in reading the book, I know, uh, both from experience and from, from the reading of the gospel, I, I know in Matthew 5 that Jesus uh, tells the world uh, of some of the troubled uh, times. 
He tells us that, in fact, that, that Matthew 5 and 45, that our Father in heaven causes rain on both the evil uh, and the good. A- a- and He causes the sun to shine on the just and the, and the unjust. Um, that bad things do happen to good people, and good things sometimes befall bad people, and, and life uh, can be confusing and hard and challenging a- at times. But the apostle uh, lifts up for us uh, the importance uh, of being an example. And in the example that he gives us and that he he calls us into into hearing uh, with our ears, maybe into seeing with our eyes from the screen or from the pages of your Bible or your phone, what what he calls into our mind uh, to see as well is the importance of honor. You note that, that he talks about how important it is to honor the leaders um, that's why we want to begin a part of, of our Scout Sunday as we tried to do today in giving some honor to our leaders. And again, I want to say thank you to, to, first to our adult leaders. Um, I want to say now thank you to, to all of the young men in our troop who once were boys. Uh, I want to say thank you as I, as I look at your sash, Andrew Carp, and I, and I see uh, all of the badges of merit that, that decorate your chest um, as I look around the neck uh, of Nick, and, and I remember um, that I desperately felt God putting upon my heart the need for a, a, a small food pantry on, on this campus. Uh, and it was Nick uh, who answered that call and built our blessing box. Um, the leadership uh, and the example that we set, it's important that we honor the leaders among us. And so I, I give thanks to you, to our patrol leaders and senior patrol leaders, to, to our scouts from, from the, the eldest uh, to the youngest. The, the truth is that leadership happens not just uh, in the moments uh, when, when someone receives uh, eagle, as I know John Michael just did recently and, and others soon to be, but leadership happens uh, even from the least of these among us. That, that even the, the shortest uh, at times uh, can be those of great stature. I'm sure you noticed it, it rung the bell in my heart this morning when I heard Eli in his prayer uh, pray and ask God for three things. Did you hear it when, when he asked God for wisdom, for stature, and for favor? That's what he asked for in his prayer. For wisdom, for stature, and for favor. Um, there is an opportunity uh, to be an example from, from the least to the greatest, from the youngest to the oldest, that, that we all can grow greater uh, in, in our wisdom. Uh, the scripture tells us that, that it is important to encourage the weak uh, in the passage, or the timid, depending uh, on your translation. Uh, you know that life is hard. We've already said it, haven't we? Twice, in fact. Uh, don't make me say it three times, my dad would say, right? Um, that, that life can be hard, um, but God is good. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, um, in the eighth chapter, that God works uh, f- for the good of those who are called to his purpose. That, that in all things, not some things, not a few things, not many things, not most things. It's a, it's a big word that, all, A-L-L. That in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Every part of, of, of your journey, Scouts, as a scout from bobcat, from bear and cub and, and weebelo and beyond, from totem ship and tenderfoot and those first uh, steps to eagle and even to the soaring beyond, are lessons for life, for living and loving uh, other people in any and every and all circumstances. In trying to be an example, knowing at times that any of us may fail or falter or fall or trip, um, but, but to seek uh, the very best for ourselves and for those around us, to, to try to encourage the, the, the weak, the, the passage says. And lastly, it tells us uh, to be patient with everyone. Uh, to be patient with everyone. These are noble things. Um, and yet our scouts, every time they gather and, and, and have the weekly meeting and, and prepare for the things, the adventures before them, as part of that oath, they talk about what it is to be mentally and morally and physically straight, right? To be awake and, and to be prepared. And, and as uh, Mr. John reminded us, as Scoutmaster Douglas reminded us, to, to do a good turn. So, so nudge somebody else and tell them, be prepared, right? Uh, be prepared. Uh, 
you, you've, told, uh, you've told at least one or two people that life is hard. Uh, the next thing you should tell them is to be prepared. Uh, you may find yourself hanging out uh, on the Buffalo River in March. Uh, sometimes it snows in March on the Buffalo River. Um, and you may find yourself in that river, uh, not just in the canoe, but having a full-on swim immersion at times. Isn't that right, Mr. Douglas? It, it happens. Um, life can be hard. I would tell you that the river can be cold. Uh, I, I will testify, uh, I was on a fishing trip with some friends one year at the Buffalo River, and we went in March when things were unseasonably warm, or, or so we thought for a while. Um, we were listening to the radio and March Madness basketball on one of the little uh, uh, places where we'd beached up. And the next thing we knew, it snowed that night and it was freezing the next day. Um, and I remember that, that I uh, noticed how my hands were getting cold. Uh, and at one point in time, uh, I went to, to grab a lure that I dropped and my wedding ring fell off of my finger. Um, and before I knew it, I was down, stripped down to my birthday suit and swimming on the bottom of the Buffalo River looking for that wedding ring. Um, and, and it was cold. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I was pretty pale when I went in. I was probably a sky blue when I, when I came out. Life, life uh, can be hard, and it's important for us to be prepared. Uh, to, to make every effort that we can to encourage uh, ourselves and the other people around us, to, to honor the leaders among us and to be patient, uh, the Bible says, with everyone. To be patient uh, with everyone. There are going to be times when people in our life, when it's obvious, uh, when they're out of the canoe and somebody's got to grab it or their stuff as it's floating by. There are moments when the other person's trying to get over the wall or through the exam or the job interview or the cancer treatments. There are going to be moments that are obvious, this struggle of other people in our lives. But make no mistake, there are moments when, when the struggle is real when life is hard, that the struggle is on the inside and maybe not as easily seen on the surface. That we're either afraid or worried or disappointed. We're maybe anxious about how things are going to turn for our job or the country. Or the overcharged gas bill. Can I get an amen? Uh, and there are opportunities uh, in, in every one of these moments as we seek... Uh, to be prepared and to do a good turn, to be patient with ourselves and, and the others around us and to know that God is at work in us and through us and for us and maybe in moments of our own frustration, perhaps even in spite of us. I am so thankful for uh, the lives that have been changed. Mr. Douglas mentioned the 70 some odd eagles that, uh, that have come through uh, our troop uh, and more on the way. I'm so thankful for the many hours of parents, of moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grands and neighbors and teachers. Um, part of that journey of an eagle, um, if you haven't experienced it and would invite you to come to, to one of the banquets when we celebrate our eagles, um, it, it's really inspiring uh, to see these men, young men, uh, receiving uh, their, their sash, but, but also placing pins uh, on their parents um, and also uh, acknowledging and giving thanks for those who have helped them along their journey and their climb uh, to the top uh, to give honor uh, to those who lead us, to, to encourage the timid uh, and to be patient with everyone. Um, may we pray? God, I just want uh, to give you thanks uh, for your word and, and for the witness that has been shared today, um, for the witness that has been lived, for the living testimony uh, of, of boys becoming men, of their families and friendships. I celebrate, God, the milestones that they have made at, at Philmont, the many miles they've walked with blistered feet and I give thanks for, uh, for the, the rains that have sometimes come uh, on their tents and to their fields, uh, for the sun that, that shines upon their faces. I pray, God, your blessing upon them, and I, and I join with my brother Eli in his prayer that I, I pray, God, for their wisdom. I, I pray for their stature to grow great and for their favor to be much. I pray, God, as well the, this day for, for many in our community, uh, some who celebrate the milestones of a birthday. Today we lift up Miss Roxy Wurtenberger uh, on her birthday. And we pray for, for her continued health and strength for she and her husband Larry and their family. 
I pray and give you thanks, God, uh, for the gift of, of my daughter, Sadie, and for her birthday yesterday, and, uh, and, and for Mr. Heath Kosis and his birthday. And I uh, give you thanks, God. I want to lift up again the name of Mr. Mark Thomas, uh, a leader in our troop as well as our, our cub master, and celebrate his birthday this week. God, I want to lift up and pray as well for those recovering from surgery. I, I think especially uh, uh, of a couple who are uh, working to, to build strength uh, and be on their feet again, uh, to pray for Joe Simmons and for Paula Stevens and, and for their strength. I want to continue to pray, God, for, for Stan Grimmett, uh, to give thanks, God, for, for his ministry of loving our church and community well and pray for, for his wellness and his fight for cancer. I want to pray for Miss Becky McPeak uh, to God and for her leadership in the life of our, our community and, and in this church and, and for her fight against cancer. God, I want to lift up uh, the family uh, of, of Brother Jerry Runyon this morning and pray your, your arms to surround Sharon and, and all of the family, the, the children and, and, and grands. That you, God, would surround them with your love and the knowledge that, that Jerry now rests with you in faith uh, a, a, among the saints. That he rests well from his labors. And God, as we mourn him and as we remember him this week, as we, as we celebrate and think about his life and his witness, God, that, that I pray as well for his family, uh, that they would know, Lord, that there uh, is much to do still uh, for you to be at work in them and through them uh, in this community. And God, I want to, uh, to pray for our nation today. One of the gentlemen in our church some weeks ago uh, was burdened on his heart to pray for our nation and, and to call us unto repentance. He'd been reading, as you know, Lord, from the book of Isaiah through, throughout the days of winter, and, and he desired God to see that America, uh, God, would repent uh, and would come before you. And so, God, I want to I pray for our nation uh, I want to lift up uh, our nation and its leaders um, in communities like ours across this country for all those who fight the good fight in our, in our classrooms, in, in the campuses of, of our schools and churches. I want to pray, God, for, for our businesses and, and, and leaders, for people that own and, and run and operate small businesses, uh, for, for our uh, leaders in hospitals that, that we prayed so fervently for in the early days of the pandemic, but to pray for those health care workers and caregivers, to pray for first responders on the streets uh, of our cities in the long hours of night and day in harm's way. I want to pray for this nation, Lord. I want to pray for, for this nation, God, to be one nation uh, under you. Lord, that despite uh, some of our differences of opinion and, and policy, God, that we would place ourselves before you and wish for your will uh, to be done. And Lord, lastly, as, as we uh, pause in, in this uh, midst of this week and, and this morning, uh, in this hour, uh, Lord, I want to invite us all uh, perhaps this morning there are some here of different traditions of the faith. Some, some of us, uh, uh, perhaps uh, Catholics or Baptists or Methodists uh, of, of all sorts and non-denoms. But, but God, to, to invite us, uh, just as we have pledged uh, of, the, uh, of our allegiance to the nation, uh, God, that we would pledge our hearts to you as your disciples. That just as the disciples were many with different places and, and careers and paths, uh, that they asked you to pray. And so, Lord Jesus, you, you taught them a simple prayer. Uh, and I invite us uh, now that we would pray uh, together uh, the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite our ushers uh, to come and, and as they make their way. Sorry? Okay, I want to invite the ushers, if you will, to, to assemble and say just a couple words as we prepare uh, to share.
Um, to those that are worshiping with us to remind you as well that in addition to tithes and offerings that, that you might share in the offering plates or, or online through the app or, or, or the ways that we may give, uh, to remind you that there is a connect card on your bulletin uh, and invite you to, to make a mark of your presence today if you haven't, um, as well as to fill out the prayer card. There is a place uh, you can mark on the card and we'll share your prayer um, with our prayer wall and our bulletin this week, or if you have a confidential prayer, to mark that on the card. Um, and the ushers will see that I get your prayer to pray, to pray with you and, and to pray for you this week. Um, if you're worshiping with us virtually, I want to invite you uh, in the same way, uh, but to know to go ahead and lift in the comments there prayers, joys, concerns you may have. If you have a confidential concern uh, that you wish to share, just to DM us. Uh, to private message us on there, um, and, and the staff will see that, that we can get in touch with you um, to, to follow up uh, this week. Um, but let us pray uh, as we uh, share a, an offering. God, we give you thanks uh, for the gift of this day. We thank you for the, for the lives of so many people, generations now, half a century, uh, in, in Troop 99 and, and, and three decades strong in, in, in Pack 82. Bless the, the gifts that we give, God. Uh, bless the, the prayers uh, that we share, uh, and God, the work that we do uh, for the transformation of lives of this community and of the world. For your glory, we pray um, in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Would you all now stand and join us in the doxology? <clears throat> One, two, three. Nick Burrell, please come forward to give the closing prayer. A scout is reverent. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today. Troop 99 has been blessed to be a part of Salem United Methodist Church and helping our troop in, in transforming boys into young men. Lord, I ask for your continued guidance and blessing over Troop 99 and the church. Please be with us throughout our day today. Amen. If you all please join us in our... I give you my heart. One, two, three, four. I believe Alex, yep, here you are, has some say. I promise I won't take up too much of your time. Um, wow, this is amazing. Look at that. I love seeing 
I love seeing all of the, the Boy Scouts and I love seeing everybody here. So I just want to thank you all for, for coming and I welcome you all to come back anytime. My name is Alex Harper. Um, I am serving as the Leadership Council Chair this year. Um, some of you know me, some of you may not. Uh, we have an amazing group of, of leaders uh, within our church and we're continuing to, to build those. So this is wonderful to talk about this today. Um, you know, over the past couple of months, we've been looking at um, our services that we offer here at Salem UMC and doing some internal research and external research. And, and what we found is, you know, we, we uh, have offered two different services uh, for many years now. And, and what we found is the best thing for um, Salem UMC is, is to see about merging those into one combined service. Um, as we were, was doing this research, fellowship was, was one of the big things that, that come out of the, uh, the need that our church really wanted and, and could see. So I want to announce that starting next Sunday, February 19th, we are going to move to a, a one service and um, we're going to do our best to communicate that out to everybody this week, but I wanted to go ahead and mention it this week, so, uh, this Sunday, so you would all be able to tell others that starting next week we're going to move to a one service. Um, we're going to do a nine o'clock fellowship in the fellowship hall. So those that want to come and do that fellowship, uh, nine o'clock in the morning on next Sunday, we'll start that. Service will start at 9.30 a.m. Sunday school will start at 10.30, 10.35 and then we'll be dismissed by, by 11.30. So, um, you know, again, we'll be in, including both, as much from both services that we can to kind of uh, uh, meet the, the spiritual needs of, of so many. So thanks again for your time. Uh, reach out to anybody on the Leadership Council. Reach out to me. And, um, you know, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming, and God bless. Paul now for brunch. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Following as, as we dismiss here, Fellowship Hall, you can go through this hall or you can go around. Uh, come join us and help uh, continue to celebrate 50 years of uh, Boy Scouts here at Salem UMC. Say, so, as soon as we're dismissed, I would ask all the Boy Scouts to come up front, uh, we want to get a get a group gr a group photo, um, and just a um, just a final thought. The the last song you guys sang said, "Lord, have your way in me," um, and I'd just like to add on to that. And I pray that we listen and follow. The Lord can have His way all He wants, and He will. However, if we don't listen and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then it doesn't do any good. So, He'll He'll have His way. You just need to listen and be attentive. Um, so, Scouts, if you'll come on up, I think uh, we're all going over there now to uh, to eat. So, dismissed. <laughs>